Hi, we're the Martins, Justin Ang and Vernon A. Oh, actually, no, we're interchangeable. So he's Justin Ang, I'm Vernon A. But yeah. then again, you know, if uh, there's any debt collectors out there, he's Vernon A, I'm Justin Ang. Stop confusing people. We are the Martins from Class 95 and we are the co-owners of Fukin. Fukin came about as a big collaboration. It started with our business partner, Bernie, who runs the Fat Boys Empire in Singapore. He brought us to this uh, Chashu store over at Old Airport Road and he's like, guys, you got to try this. And we're like, Chashu is Chashu lah, you know? Mm. So we went there, we tried it, we're like, what voodoo is this? No, right. no char siu should taste this good. Yeah, exactly. We couldn't we couldn't believe it. And we kept going back there after, yeah. after again and again again because it's so good. What if we open a restaurant with them? They are the experts at the hawker, mm. but why not we bring in the expertise from the Fat Boys group and we actually start a restaurant? And that's where it all came about. I mean, this is the char siu to end all char siu's, right? <laughs> and it is such a tedious process. Even though we're part of the business, we can't believe how much work goes into the char siu every single day. It's roasted for a good three to four hours, uh, each batch of char siu. Just the way they do it, the marinade and the effort put in there. Our roasters have burned scars all over their hands. Oh, Chef, that's the extra flavour. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's juicy, it's, it's so tasty and, and it, it's just the best char siu you ever eat. The siu yolk is just the perfect complement to the char siu because the char siu is sweet. The siu yolk is just pure savoury decadence. You got that crackling skin. You know what I love about siu yolk? It's very uh, inclusive. You have fat, you have lean meat, yeah. and you have crispy skin. Oh, yeah. So it's a triple layer of, of meat. You get three distinct flavours in one bite of a siu yolk. So our roast duck is a herbal roast duck, roasted in 17 secret herbs and spices. Yeah. We've got more than uh, Colonel Sanders. Yeah, so KFC <laughs> do 11, we beat them, we got 17. 17. Yeah. It's called a tang kui duck, it's served to you with uh, the herbal sauce. It's super tender, it's delicious, the skin is a bit crackly. It goes really, really well with uh, the, the mee pok. Well, we basically hounded them. We hung out at their hawker stall and uh, we just kept saying, please, please, please. And it probably took another year of, you know, just discussions. Planning, finding the right place. Finding the right place. Basically, everything you, you see and taste. It took us a year to get it right, but we didn't want to do it until it's absolutely perfect. Our uh, mastermind partner, Bernie, he just has the minus touch when it comes to, you know, coming up with menus and, and choosing the right kind of food that people like. So we literally left him to do all the dirty work. We just came to eat. And then uh, yeah. when we didn't like anything, we just threw it outside. We were the taste testers and we tasted it. Mmm! Okay, done. That's on the menu. Yeah, that's all we needed. Uh, the moment we started planning, we had this idea to call this place Roast. Easy word, easy to remember. It represents what we do, Roast. And we were very stuck with that name. But when everything started coming up, one of our partners thought, you know what, with the way the decor is and you know the kind of food we serve, maybe we should give it a Chinese name. And we're all like, <laughs> None of us are very proficient in Chinese, so it was a process when the word Fukin uh, in, in Chinese came out, all of us immediately gravitated towards it. First of all, because it's very cheeky. Fukin in Mandarin is Fu Qing, but then when we translated it, uh, I think it's in, in Cantonese, Fukin. It's like, hey, that actually sounds fun. It's a name that people will be very curious about. It's easy to remember as well, because what other restaurant is called that? We aim to make that sign the most uh, <laughs> Instagram sign in Singapore. So the triple happiness is the uh, whole dish tofu, but it's not just regular tofu. So we actually top it with century egg, with ikura, and with pop floss. It's got this beautiful combination, like when you scoop up, you get the sauce, you get ikura, you get pop floss, you get century egg, you get tofu. It's just one big mouthful of happiness, and that's why we call it the triple happiness. It's crispy uh, lotus root chips. So it's healthy, uh, oh, yeah, in, so we try to be tell people. <laughs> doused in uh, salted egg sauce, and uh, we've got beer on the menu as well. It, it goes beautifully with beer. It's great beer food, yeah. You can keep munching and munching before you know the whole bowl is gone. That is the perfect snack. It's one of our favourites. In fact, many people have come here and asked us, can we bottle this and bring it home? And we're like, well, with the sauce, it's going to get a bit soggy. So the best thing to do is come here, eat it freshly prepared. Oh, it's the best. Thing. Funny enough, over the last few months, one of the things that a lot of people tell me that is their favourite, and it has become my favourite, is actually the noodles. Our guys make the best mee pok in the world. You cannot come here and not try the mee pok. It's delicious, it's clean, it doesn't have that, you know, that yellow noodle taste. It makes it so well with the sauces. Mm, it's just amazing. 
don't let anybody fool you into thinking that it's easy to set up a F&B business. It's oh, not. Yeah. Singapore is the one of the toughest places to do it. First of all, because the supplies are expensive. Then it comes to the staff, which is really hard to get. Manpower issues in Singapore is, is prevalent in any industry, let alone F&B. We're not going to say it's a perfect place. Every place has like teething problems when you first start up. There's always room for improvement, but we're getting there hopefully, and we're enjoying the process of doing it as well. I, I think we were really blessed uh, for the first two weeks, three weeks, four weeks. You know, like we were selling out our meats and everything. We kind of expected that the crowd would be good, but we didn't expect that the crowd would be consistent. And, and they kept coming back in month two and in month three as well. So unexpected, but uh, very pleasant surprise. The trick now as F&B owners, obviously, is to you know maintain that and, and, and keep that crowd coming back for more. A lot of the initial success, I'd like to think it's because people felt the way I felt when I first went to Rose Paradise. Yeah. You, the first time you put it in your mouth, is like, wow, <laughs> I've never tasted char siu like that. I've never had roast pork this good and when you have good food and good service like we do people will keep coming back it is the best char siu and siu bar you'll get in singapore it's a fun setting it's comfort food it's everything you need for a perfect meal it's not expensive it's not expensive it's a great place for friends to gather what more could you want in a restaurant well um, if your car is dirty he will polish it for you while you eat <sighs> spend 350 and above <clears throat> yeah